You have heard it said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Where is that? In the Ten Commandments. Again, most days. You can get by. But I say to you, whoever lusts after a woman has committed adultery in his heart. I dare say, more difficult. Divorce. Swearing oaths. An eye for an eye. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye. Where is that? It's in Exodus. It's a very broad principle of justice, isn't it? What does it mean, an eye for an eye? Return vengeance? Well, it just means the punishment should be fair. It should be proportional to the crime. An eye for an eye, not two eyes. When somebody gouges out your eye, you only get to gouge out one of theirs. The punishment should fit the crime. Jesus says, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say, turn the other cheek. If somebody hits you, be passive. Don't even retaliate. You've heard it said, love your neighbor and harm your enemy. I say, love your enemy. So in each of these cases, a spiritualized, an internalized, a more challenging statement of the law in which the rule of external behavior becomes a principle of internal transformation. Don't you think it would take a special kind of person never to get angry, never to lust, never to seek retaliation, to love everyone, even those who are their enemy? He then turns to cult and piety. He says, yes, you should be generous and giving of alms. He says, yes, you should pray. And he says, yes, you should fast. You should deny yourself food. But he says, how should you do each of these things in secret? He says, if you give to charitable, don't we, giving to charity is good in our society? Does he say you should claim it as a tax deduction? No. Right? Because if you claim it as a tax deduction, why have you made the gift? To get a tax break, right? That's right. That's the only reason. If you give $20 million to build an athletic facility, should you put your name on it? No. If any of your lives are changed by this course and you have very wealthy parents who want to endow a chair in my honor that I can sit in, it's about $2 million, should they name that chair after themselves? Why? Why not? It's vain, because why are they giving it if they want it named? To glorify themselves. Their motive is self-glorification. So you should take the $2 million, put it in cash, and anonymously slide it under my door. <laughs> I will see to it that the chair is endowed and that their glory shall be in heaven. Mm. <laughs> I don't have that power, but it would be appreciated. But think about what he's saying. Give secretly, right? Because if you're giving in secret, what's your only motive? To do good, to love what is good. Pray. Should you pray so that everybody hears you? No, because then you're doing it so that people will think you're pious. Pray so that no one knows. Fast, but don't go around saying, oh, I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten for God for three weeks. Go around saying you're so full that you had a big Egg McMuffin for breakfast while inside your tummy grumbles away in holiness. Hmm? He says, this is how you pray. And here comes the Lord's Prayer, right? The most famous prayer ever. It doesn't just happen to be in a random place. It's right in the center of the Sermon on the Mount. Hmm? Think of what it says. Give us this day our... Daily bread. Does it say, give me a lot of money? No. It says, give me just the bread I need. It says, forgive me my sins, and I will forgive those who have sinned against me. This simple, simple prayer of piety. It has parables about serving God. Some of the most famous metaphors that Jesus offers for what it means to serve God to store up your treasure in heaven. 
for where your treasure is, there will your heart be. The impossibility of serving two masters. The injunction to seek the kingdom and to seek righteousness. And concluding with the most basic principles. Judge not, lest you be judged. Seek, and you shall find. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. For that is the whole of the law and the prophets. Here again, emphasizing that his teachings fulfill the Jewish law. <clears throat> and it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, this conclusion of this first block of teaching, the people were astonished at his doctrine.